Welcome back to Pro Wrestling Throwdown for the week of May 23rd, 2021. This is Luke the Big Dog Williams. I'm Caleb Black, along with our in-studio producer, the Mighty Max Fury, and our new in-ring correspondent, Quicksilver, and we are talking the Intercontinental Title Tournament. We are in the semifinals and finals of bracket number three. Our semifinalists are Christian Cage and Big Daddy Cool Diesel, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and Ricky the Dragon's team boat. In other Jesus words, Christ. I can throw this water bottle yeah, anywhere and, and, and fuck hit it, hit a rock. All right. Well, you could have hit the rock if you were Stone Cold because he did it a lot. Yeah. He All did right. A lot. So he may or may not be on this list. <laughs> 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 he fucking better well be. <laughs> All right. So let's get right into Actually, the brass tacks. He's in the, the, he's in the he, yeah, yeah. yeah. Made it to the last round. Uh, let's get right into brass tacks. It is Christian Cage versus Kevin Nash. Luke, you won the last round, so you can either start off or defer. I will defer. All right. I will go with the minute mark. All right. Kevin Nash, as I mentioned, established himself as a heavyweight contender in the Intercontinental title run and wrestled against the names like Bret Hart, Owen Hart, the British Bulldog, Stone Cold St No, no, I'm sorry, not Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm thinking ahead. Yeah. Uh, Shawn Michaels, you name it. When it comes to the best technical wrestlers of the early 90s, those guys were on the list and were already considered at the top of their game as Intercontinental Champions. Kevin Nash got brought over from WCW after having been personally scouted by Shawn Michaels, and ironically would go on to wrestle him for the Intercontinental title after he took it after Nash took it off of Razor Ramon. But again, when you look at the stature of every single one of these individuals, they're all relatively the same build. We're looking between 6'1 and 6'4. We're looking at guys who are easily maneuverable in one another's styles on the mat. Kevin Nash came in at six nine and a half and said, I can go just as hard as you can, just as believably, and we're going to have brilliant matches. And that's exactly what they did. It's also worth mentioning that Scott Hall and Kevin Nash put on a clinic for the Intercontinental title. Time. Damn. So wanted glad more. I got time I wanted right more. So glad I called <laughs> yeah, time You're right goddamn right you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Luke, lead us on the road with Christian Cage. All right, I'll go to Christian. Okay. Creepy little bastard. Creepy little What? <laughs> Christian Cage, uh, like Kevin Nash, his opponent in this tournament, uh, had uh, an intercontinental title defenses against some of the biggest names at that time. They were champion. Kevin Nash, you know, you said Razor Ramon and all that. Yep. Yes, they were all built the same size as Kevin Nash. Christian, on the other hand, wrestled people like Jeff Hardy. Uh, uh, title defenses against Triple H. Title defenses against Edge, Chris Jericho, Shelton Benjamin. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. When it comes to the style match that Christian had, it was from bell to bell, full tilt. Yeah. Uh, there wasn't. I don't think. I dare somebody on there to tell me that they watched the Christian Cage Intercontinental Championship match that they didn't enjoy. Agreed. Because I don't think it's out there. I don't think there was ever one that happened. I can tell you what my favorite one was. Right. right off the bat. Uh, Christian uh, also was in a defended the title in the era of the ladder matches. Yep. In the era of the table matches. Yep. In the era of the no holds barred matches. That's even back when steel cage matches. Uh, televised I'll give you every minutes. day of the week. Uh, every day of the week. Time. You know, yeah, I mean, you know, it's. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. go ahead. No, that, that, good argument both yeah, sides. No, yeah, no, 100%. Good argument. I. I gotta go with Christian Cage on that one. I don't even disagree with that. I don't either. I don't. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I don't agree. I don't disagree with yeah. that. Yeah, Kevin Nash was a damn good Intercontinental Champion, but I don't think you. I don't think he was nearly as good as Christian was. And that's coming from the biggest Kevin Nash fan in the world. Well, when it comes to Kevin Nash's title defenses and stuff, and, and, it, during uh, the watchability yeah. factor, were unless it was pay per views, yeah. What, and back soon, in those days? Back, but back then, even defending the Intercontinental title, you knew he was getting groomed to be world champion. Yes. And you yes. also knew it wasn't going to last because... Even though now that he's out, I will point out something that you didn't point out, and that is the fact he was the first person in his rookie year of the WWE to hold all three championships. That's true. And actually, the one thing that I looked at, yep. that I would have looked at between those two arguments, yep. is it something that wasn't mentioned? You, were talk you talked about, and you had a really good argument, that he faced off against guys that were supposedly more maneuverable. Kevin Nash for his size, it's maneuverable. I agree. So they people can say what they part. people can say what they want all they like to about him only having five moves. That's the only moves he needed to know how. He needed to do. five. However, yep. however, on the argument on Christian Cage size, he often fought guys and defended his title against guys twice. His oh size. yeah. The, the I was trying not to go the size route. Yeah, because yeah, really that was, was the same argument. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. it's necessary though. Well, I'm going like to use Christian it. Connection. All right. <laughs> let's let's get into the fucking nitty gritty here. Stone I Cold Steve defer. Austin versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. I defer. Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'll start at five o'clock. Okay. 
Stone Cold Steve Austin took the Intercontinental title and used it all the way to the top, even having competed for the Intercontinental title after having won his first WWF World Championship, which you didn't see a whole lot, but it did happen. Stone Cold wrestled Triple H in one of the best Intercontinental title matches that you could possibly put on pen to paper. It was, it was everything he wanted it to be, and that was at the time before Stone Cold's injuries caught up to him, and he could still go with the top level. If he hadn't taken the opportunity after, if he hadn't taken the opportunity of becoming a great Intercontinental Champion, he would have had a deterrent to becoming one of the greatest in-ring performers in the history of in-ring performers. Stone Cold Steve Austin transcended wrestling at the time, and he did so starting as an Intercontinental Champion. Yeah, all of his all of the stuff that we remember, the beer trucks and, and, and the craziness, comes from the gimmick that Stone Cold became just himself. A lot of that was because he was who he was, but he didn't get to be who he was before he was Intercontinental Champion. Time. Time. Very well, well said. Well, thank you. Very thank well you. This could, mine, be, this could be an interesting Mine's going to sound like I'm shooting on Austin, but I want you to know that I'm not. Yeah. <clears throat> I'll go with Start 15. 15. Yeah. Yeah. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat right now. Yeah. yeah. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, yes. Uh, uh, when you when you go with Austin and, and you talk about the fact of the pinnacle of being the heavyweight champion and then going back and being Intercontinental Champion again is a fantastic thing for Stone Cold Steve Austin. However, when it comes to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, the highest championship that Ricky the Dragon Steamboat held in the WWF was the Intercontinental title. The Intercontinental title to him was the heavyweight championship because of the fact that when you think about Stone Cold Steve Austin, you think WWF champion. Yeah. The leader of the locker room, the Attitude Era guy. Yeah. When you think of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat in the WWE, you think Intercontinental Championship. Yeah. He took that, that championship and made it and elevated it even further than what the Macho Man had elevated it before then because as the Macho Man dropped the title, he also went on to be the heavyweight mm -hmm. champion. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat stayed in the Intercontinental title uh, contention until leaving the WWE, which when he come back Hi. to the WWE... Shit! Sorry. Damn good argument, though. That wasn't a bad one. It's a hard... It, that's a, that's a hard tall pick. mountain to climb. Yeah. That, that is difficult because, yes, Austin used the Intercontinental title to elevate himself. Like you pointed out, Dragon kind of elevated the belt and yep. kind of stuck yep. there to it. I kind of... I, I, I gotta go with the Steamboat. Yep, honestly. I honestly, I'm not going to even argue that because it's like, well, it's like even the same point that I made. Austin was as big as Austin was after his Intercontinental title runs. Ricky the Dragon was right. running I, as Intercontinental champion. I did love those those runs, but yeah, he this is about the greatest ice Intercontinental champion. champion yeah, I, I don't I, disagree. I feel like I, the Steamboat kind of elevated. Yeah, it. I think that's a good pick. This is about the the greatest Intercontinental, Intercontinental championship. Yep. I'm gonna throw my veto down. Really? You're gonna yeah. you're gonna use your own veto? On I your can't. Own I can't. Here's the deal. While I agree with everything that you've said, while I agree with everything you said, and I, hell, I agree with what I said because well, I said it's a close it. Call to begin with. It is a close call, but to put Ricky the Dragon Steamboat intercontinental title reign from '85 to like '87 against Stone Cold's three intercontinental title oh, reigns. Man. During the height of professional wrestling, not to mention having defended them against even all of the and, and I'm vetoing names. against my yeah. own guy. Yeah. But I only didn't use it. my veto because I wanted to save it for another tournament. I, 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 I have to. I have all to. Right. I have to well, put Stone Cold ahead. You've used your veto on myself on yourself, which is but, a hell of a move. But it, it, I, when I'm looking at the people who are going to watch this video, I don't want them to be like, well. That exact argument. It's like, well, yeah, he was a great champion. And he did elevate the belt yeah, better than anyone else. But Austin did it three times with the best wrestlers in the business. Austin was, I mean, pound for pound, one of the best to hold the strap. I don't disagree. All right. Well, I guess we it's Christian versus have Stone Cold. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Christian Cage. Uh, 30 second push, 30 second rebuttal. Sure. 30 second push, 30 second rebuttal. Okay. Uh, I'll go with the 45. Wait, no, you get to choose. Yeah. I'll start us off. That's okay. fine. Uh, yeah, this is going to be difficult. Yeah. It's hard to say much more about Stone Cold Steve Austin's Intercontinental Title Reign, but I'd like to point out something that he wrestled every single one of his latter Intercontinental Title matches with all of the injuries he's already sustained. And he wrestled at the top level. 
which is almost impossible to do. Having recovered from the several knee injuries that he'd had prior, before even coming to the WF, getting to the level that he was, not quite into the neck injury, but up until that point, was wrestling on half a tank of gas. Guys like Kurt Angle for the Intercontinental title. Guys like Kurt Angle, who you could not wear out no matter how hard you tried. Austin did that to protect and to elevate the Intercontinental title. To make it the number two belt and to make it mean something. That way, when guys would go on to win the world title, you could come off and say, yeah, I wrestled Austin Time. for the Intercontinental. It's a good argument. Thank you. Uh, I'll start at 40. Yep. <coughs> this is your intro? Yes. Okay. Go. Christian, uh, like I said in, in the past round before, was a tag team specialist. He used the Intercontinental Championship as the jump off to be considered a standout out of the uh, the limelight of Edge. Uh, Stone Cold, you already knew, was going to be a champion. Christian had to battle that, that, that way up. Uh, Christian, uh, with the Intercontinental title reigns that he did have, made them mean something in a time where the Intercontinental title didn't mean anything. To be fair. Uh, I'm not saying it didn't mean anything. What I'm saying is it wasn't the height of what it once was, and it wasn't the height of what it is now. If that makes sense. That's my time. Okay. My you're, 30 second rebuttal. When you talk about breaking out, Stone Cold Steve Austin was fired unceremoniously from WCW, spent a little time in ECW before getting called up and getting a gimmick like the Ringmaster. There is no guy who worked harder to stand out than Stone Cold Steve Austin, and not only did he do that, but he excelled to the absolute highest measurable level of professional wrestling. There isn't a wrestling fan who doesn't know Stone Cold's name. There isn't a person who's not, not seen wrestling who doesn't know Stone Cold's name. And none of that could have been achieved if he wasn't having matches with The Rock and Kurt Angle and Triple H and The Undertaker and Kane and even, you know, guys like Vince McMahon. Well, I don't think he ever wrestled Vince. You know what I'm saying? The other top guys in the industry for the Intercontinental title. Belt mattered all the way up to him winning the world title, and he treated it like it did. That's my time. Okay, uh, I'll go with the fifteen. Yep. Uh, Christian Cage, while uh, Stone Cold, like you, the, you said all those things, and I agree with a lot of what you yeah. said. But the fact is, Christian Cage was told by management by Vince McMahon that he didn't believe that he was a viable champion. He didn't believe that he had the look to be anything more than a tag team wrestler, which he connected with the fans, which is something we know in this day and age is almost impossible. Yeah. And proved everyone wrong that he could hold a singles championship, even against your own boss who says seconds. he don't believe in you. Yep. Two very compelling arguments. Fair enough. Overall, I think I gotta go with Christian. Um... What, like, are you, what are your thoughts on before any final decisions? Before any final decisions, um, while Christian did, like you said, you know, he elevated himself up against even his own boss. However, I, I, I hate to say it, and, and it was sucked that the management was against him on that. Christian didn't really elevate to where he should have been until he left the WWE. Stone Cold, sure. however... Treated every it's fair bit, argument. every bit, like he said, he treated the intercontinental. Fair he treated every art title he had like it was like, the biggest like title the in the business. Title. Like it was. That's like a fair it, argument. That, to me, that's what makes Stone Cold the better champion versus Christian. I love Christian. Don't get me wrong. I loved him when he wrestled singles. I loved him when he wrestled tag team. But as far as their the way they were in the, as far as the intercontinental title goes, I'm gonna have to go with Austin on this. That's a fair argument. You know what? I can point. Things, so let's go with Stone Cold. All right. I agree 100%. And just think, he wouldn't even be in this tournament right now if he hadn't used that, yeah. used that veto. Well, and that's the thing, man. Yeah. I, it's hard to argue even that going a against myself, a Even going team. against myself. Yeah. Because let's face it, if Ricky the Dragon Steamboat would have went on, Christian would have beat him. The way we argued it, the way it would have been argued, yeah. Yeah. it yeah. probably would have Well, yeah, because it... His his intercontinental title career really did come up near Christians. Right. Uh, no, I'm happy with that decision. So Stone Cold Steve Austin is now in the finals in with the, who? Finals. the Rock with the and Rock. Oh man, uh, who was it? We're asking uh, you. Where's the good surprise on you? you. The Rock and Kane. That's wow, right. Rock Kane and Stone Cold. This is going to be an attitude. It's an attitude here fight. <laughs> All right, y'all. Well. 
That oh, is like the next one's gonna get nasty. That is round three of the Intercontinental Title Tournament. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave us a comment <laughs> down below what you think about the results. Send us an email at prowrestlingthrowdown at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at prowrestlingtd. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash prowrestlingthrowdown. And stay tuned because we got one more tournament coming this week. Woo! -hoo -hoo.